Huh? Wait! Don't go that way! I'm Bo Vanderhuge. I'm Bob Johnson. I'm Chisel Bear Jest. <laughs> I'm Varen Von Vanderden. I'm Punch Rock Groin. And I'm Gristle McThornbody. This and more on Maximum Weeboo presents Gunsmith Cats. All right, let's get this thing started. Yeah, I can dig this. It really isn't that bad. Da -da 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 -da. Stop that. Uh oh. What's more American than cars, babes, and guns? Would you stop that, please? Oh. Suck, squeeze, bang, blow! Hey, wait a minute, isn't this kind of like... No. Cowboy Bebop? Oh my god, you're right! Oh yeah, I actually was inspired by that. Oh, I, I didn't know that. Go figure. Interesting. Huh. Hey, Punch! W was that an accurate cutaway of that gun there? What? Sorry, I was too busy passing. Hey, Nacre! Yeah, that was a nice intro. Wait a minute. Hmm? <laughs> They're just reusing the same shot over again. Cheapskates. Damn it, the hood's too long! More weapon. Wow, it's the mother load. Yeah, if your mom's name is Schwartzkopf. Wow, huh? Something for everyone. <laughs> what kind of a nut would live in a place like this? Yeah, right. Gunsmith Cats! Gunsmith Cats, Gunsmith Cats. I love me some Gunsmith Cats, because you know what Gunsmith Cats has? Guns! Guns, 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 guns! Okay, you expect that, and I know you do. If you watched the last episode, which maybe two of you did. I know two of you did. But anyway, Gunsmith Cats. It's got guns, it's got bullets, it's got cars. I like cars, too. Um, it's also got some nice babes! Well, Rally Vincent, anyway. Uh... Um, Mini May makes me feel kind of odd. Guns! Definitely guns. Guns with Cats was not always about Rally Vincent and Mini May Hopkins, though. Guns with Cats originally started out being about their, uh, partner in crime, I guess we'll call him, being Bandit. He originally had his own ser own manga series and his own anime, both which were both called Riding Bean. Riding Bean obviously followed Bean Bandit around while he did his... Delivery, shall we say, as he could serve as a getaway driver or an escape artist, essentially. Uh, Rally Vincent herself also went through a transformation. She went from your typical blonde-haired, blue-eyed, all-American girl to a half-English, half-Indian, blue-eyed girl. Don't ask me how that works, but, well, it works for me. <laughs> Especially with the way she likes guns and cars so dang much, but wait, no, she likes, she likes guns and cars more than people, anyway. And that's really all there is to it. But honestly... Maybe, I don't know, I like Bean Bandit just as much. I think he would, could have had his own story even. But honestly, let's be honest. It's Japan. Japan loves its girls. I mean, that's, I think, the whole point of a magical girl cartoon. Wouldn't you agree? And, yeah, I didn't even realize Sailor Moon bought it. And I don't really give two fucks either. Uh, anyway. Something else that's impressive about this series is just the sheer amount of detail they put into it. Apparently the uh, team that actually made the anime actually went to Chicago and did a lot of research so they could get all the details right about how the city looked, how the police cars looked, you know, everything. What's more impressive though is how along the way they managed to unintentionally capture the politics too. Hi, what's Crackalackin? I'm here to talk to you about everything Chicago. United Airlines and of course, the odd politics, the odd, odd politics of Chicago. See, the thing is, is that way back in the day, way you, back in the... You, you blew your load too soon. Oh, man. Well, you know, I'm pretty sure you know about that the best, huh? 
So, like I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted, was the fact that Chicago's had a long, long history of being politically fucked up. Now, example A. Here it is, bullet. I want to tell you one thing. Remember how in Gunsmith Cats, big old gun raid, but it turns out, spoiler alert, one of them was really, really, really corrupt. <laughs> Edward Hanks, you're under arrest. Well, the same thing happens in Chicago, for real. Let me take, for example, Mayor Daly. O-M-G. First of all, he's kind of like a big dictator. Because he is the only mayor in the world who can get away with just plowing over an airport in the middle of the night, an active airport in the middle of the night, and get away with it. When he wanted to expand Chicago hair, the governor was like, you know, you're running the state. You got it. There is something really weird about Chicago. It's the politics. And I gotta say, Gunsmith Cats did it really, really well. And you know, on a side note, funny enough, it was because of Chicago. Our Second Amendment, back on a personal level. McDonald versus Chicago, baby. Woo! <clears throat> anyway, getting back on topic. So, yeah, the, uh... As it turns out, the ATF was, is involved in the uh, illegal gun running uh, operation. Imagine that. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, a uh, little kind of like foretelling the future too, I guess if you think about it. Anyway, yeah, politics, Chicago style. So I'm sure a lot of you are probably wondering, why do we like this show but not High School of the Dead? I mean. Superficially, there are a lot of similarities, right? I mean, girls, guns, you know, fan service, so... See, that's the thing, is High School of the Dead is basically just all fan service. Yes! There's no real depth to it. I mean, you can't really like the characters. Whereas Gunsmith Cats, you can like those characters. See, it's not a complex story, it's not deep, like, say, Ghost in the Shell or something that, you know, most people would agree is pretty awesome, but, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be real complex. Just simple, but serviceable. See, and despite the simplicity, there's still a lot of detail that's, and thought that's put into it, and I like that. Just look at these little details here and there, like, you know, adding the S on the end of the sign that says uh, Gunsmith Cat uh, originally. And just the way the characters seem familiar with each other. I, I guess I like that. That's something I appreciate. So I guess what I'm getting at is uh, that the important thing is that a show is honest. Whereas High School of the Dead, not really honest. Pretty much just like, yay, boobs, guns. So while there's still plenty of fan service, it's much more restrained and, uh, I won't really say classy, but, uh, it's not quite as over the top. So it's easy just to take it as part of the fun of the series that way. So, and it also helps that it's not the focus of the show, even if it is still present. Yes, Illinois, there is fan service in Gunsmith Cats. It's not as egregious as High School of the Dead, but it is still there. Now, for those of you at home playing fan service bingo, we've got low angle shots, male gaze, torn clothing, and of course, girls with guns, plus upskirts bondage and in writing beam, Yuri and brief nudity. But you can check that out by yourself. And as a bonus, Tiffany Grant serving pizza. Delivery. Working hard, huh? Try the sausage. Uh, Gunsmith Cats also has this trademark slow vertical pan whenever they have a fan service scene, so keep an eye out for that. Hold it. Hmm? Where do you think you're going with those? The rally, there's smoke grenades. No explosions in the house, May. Now go back to your room. Aww. So in conclusion, uh, we really like this show. It, it has good characterization, uh, attention to detail. That political satire is right on the spot. Cars, guns, and really well done action, all the things I ever needed. Well, it's got fan service, which isn't totally over the top. So we give this a fuck yeah, look it up! Next time on Maximum Weeaboo, my little sister.
Ooh, yeah, yes. Ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. Hello, ladies.